The BC Living Labs is a on-farm, farmer-led research project that really is around looking to mitigate climate change while also answering questions and supporting farms in, in their development and the growth of their farms. And so it's, it's a really interesting project where we actually get to, to work with farmers. They're the ones who have the questions, they're the ones who are, are looking for solutions and we get to come alongside them and, and help them answer those. My name is Zachary Fleming. I'm a professional agrologist and the project lead for the BC Hazelnuts as part of the BC Living Labs. So doing on-farm research in hazelnuts is pretty important. Um, hazelnuts, while they've been around in BC for a fairly long time, um, all the varieties we've been planting and growing today are, are all pretty new. We had this revitalization happen in the industry where we, we lost the old orchards and we gained new ones. Um, and in this transition, we got new growers, new varieties, new production systems, and there's a lot of unknown. It's a relatively you know, small produced crop in, in BC, and so we just have lots of questions. And so anytime we can actually do research, you know, answer these questions, I get asked all the time, whether it's nutrient management or it's you know, cover cropping, you name it, it's really just good to be able to find some solutions and steer you know, these new producers in the right direction. Here at Woodgrove Farms, we're looking into nitrogen uh, management as a part of our research trial for the BC Living Labs. Specifically, we're looking at application rates, types, trying to figure out what is the, you know, the best use of this nitrogen, how much do we actually need. Uh, also looking at application timing, when is the best time to apply, but then also the source. So, you know, specifically on the application side of granular versus a fertigation. And this year, we're also looking at manure as another amendment for our fertilizer project here. My name is Charles Dick. I'm a third generation farmer, first generation hazelnut farmer. We have two operations in our family farm. Both are doing hazelnuts. We have 30 acres total that we manage. The main part of our operation is our poultry operation. We have broilers and we have layers. Hazelnuts has formed a secondary part of our operation as we've expanded our orchard. We really value our hazelnut operation because it gives us some diversification to our poultry operation and we know that over time they will yield and make a good part of our farm income. The hazelnut industry has sort of had two phases. It goes back you know a century in Chilliwack and BC but really these very established orchards got completely wiped out by the eastern filbert blight that came through. And so a lot of growers just decided that they were done growing hazelnuts. It really pushed a lot of people out, but then it opened up new opportunity um, for new growers to come in. And that was really helped out by the province of British Columbia by having a grant for hazelnut renewal program. And that covered a good portion of the planting costs and the removal costs of the trees. I think that that kick-started the industry again. It got a lot of growers interested in it where maybe they wouldn't have been, us included. I'm Karina Sakalavkas, industry specialist with the BC Ministry of Agriculture, supporting the hazelnut sector. Over the past seven years, I have the privilege of working with many growers across the province as they were going through difficult times and embrace new opportunities. When Easter fever blight swept through the orchards in BC, it brought local hazelnut production to the hall. Many long-standing growers were forced to remove their trees. It was a difficult time, but at the same time, it was a turning point. In partnership with growers, the ministry launched the BC Hazelnut Renewal Program during 2018 and 2022. This initiative helped to remove infected orchards replanted with new cultivars and adopt new agronomic practices. The goal wasn't just to recover, it was to rebuild a stronger and more resilient industry. That effort is paying off. New orchards are being planted across the province. Growers, nurseries and industry leaders are collaborating more than ever, coordinating plant material, sharing knowledge and building a success for the new industry. Programs like the Perennial Crop Renewal and the Beneficial Management Practices provide technical assistance and support to the sector. There is still work to be done, developing processing capacity, strengthening market channels, and continuing to invest in research. But the outlook is promising. 
The hazelnut industry is poised to do really well in BC. Production is coming online and producers are excited about where it's headed. At this point, the industry is smaller than it was before, but the new trees, varieties that have been planted are, are higher yielding varieties than the ones that were existing. And so we're expecting that the industry will be at a similar place to where it was before EFB. And I think there's a lot of growers who are excited to be growing hazelnuts and to do a really good job of it and market the hazelnuts themselves too and get more people interested in buying local products. Our farm got involved in the Living Lab project um, to see how we can improve our amendment application and to see the impact of our granular fertilizers and whether we can start to reduce that without adversely impacting our tree health uh, and growth and um, nut production. There's not a lot of good data about fertilizer application for hazelnut trees and what the impact is and what the rates are. And so the, the purpose of the project is to really see whether we can scale that back. Nitrogen is an important nutrient to look at when it comes to hazelnuts and perennial crops in general. Nitrogen is a fairly volatile, easily lost nutrient. It can be leached out through the groundwater, it can you know, be emitted as a greenhouse gas, and that's what we're primarily concerned about. So trying to make sure we maximize the use of nitrogen is, is really important. It's also the number one you know, building block nutrient we have as an input. When you look at growing across the board, like nitrogen is all we ever talk about. And for good reason, there's a lot of you know, needs and benefits for it. So really that's kind of been the focus here is around that, that nitrogen utilization and making sure that when we are applying nitrogen, that the, the crop's actually using it and that it's not going to waste. And that, you know, that's gonna affect both the, the environment, but also for the farmer. We don't wanna be spreading something and only getting half of it back. If we can you know, get 90% utilization or 95% utilization of our nitrogen, well, that's just you know, more money in the pocket of farmers. And again, better for the environment. Nitrogen behaves a little differently in perennial crops than annuals, and mostly around it's the long-term effects. So um, nitrogen can actually be stored, it can be carried in from season to season. So what we apply this year will be used this year, but it's also going to be used next year. Hazelnuts are specifically unique in this way too, where they have a high storage amount of nitrogen. So when it comes to even that spring release, you know, that first bud, the expansion of leaves, all that is kind of used based on last year's nitrogen storage. So managing your nitrogen isn't just important for this year's crop, but it's also important for that long-term growth and development. Through this research, our goals is really around, again, maximizing our nitrogen usage. So what we're kind of measuring too with that is looking at yield response, you know, is there a positive or negative change depending on how much fertilizer we're putting out or what type of fertilizer we're putting out. Um, we're also just generally looking at plant health as a, as a metric. Are the trees happy? Is everything looking as it should? There's no nutrient deficiencies. Those are the kind of primary concerns that we'll have. But at the same time, looking at you know, things like our soil health. So what are the nutrient storage capacities looking like? Is there improvement to our overall soil health? Also emissions factors, you know, are we increasing emissions or decreasing emissions? That's an important part of this whole project. Here on this farm at Woodgrove, Historically, again, granular has been the, the method of application for the nitrogen. And so what we've been looking at is, one, like what are those rates looking like? How is it being applied? Is something around timing more important? Uh, but also they've started utilizing fertigation. So we've brought that into the question of how do we maximize you know, nitrogen applications through our irrigation system? And then most recently, they've been asking the questions around manure use. And so we've started looking into, okay, how do we utilize you know, the, the broiler manure that's already on this farm as an application? Can that replace our nitrogen through granular or fertigation? Is it a component of that? And that's kind of what we've been looking at in terms of fertilizer application around nitrogen. Something I've been impressed by with Living Labs is that it's farmer-led. And so with our operation here, we also have a lot of poultry manure. And something I've been interested in is seeing if we can use that poultry manure in our hazelnut trees. We know that Poultry manure is used elsewhere globally for hazelnut orchards, but it's not well known what the impact is and, and how well the nutrients move through the soil into the tree, what the nutrient levels are. So that is a great opportunity that Living Labs is, is partnering with us on this year, and that's expanding our trial to also include uh, manure amendments and different rates and to see what the impact is on the trees and tree health and soil health and whether we can continue to expand that. We have more than enough manure and it is 
usually shipped off farm and so we're bringing in granular fertilizer. We'd love to replace that granular fertilizer with the manure we already have here and use that for the trees to put more organic matter back into the soil, but also use the nutrients we already have as a cost saving measure, but also as a more holistic approach to orchard management. Coming up with a fertilizer plan or like a nutrient management plan uh, can be a, a bit tricky. With perennial crops especially, we look at a couple factors. We first start with soil samples, um, understanding what is our reserve, what's in the soil, what's, what's currently available to the crop. But then we also utilize tissue samples. So understanding you know, what's in the tree, how is the tree responding, is there a deficiency there? And it's through those two components that we can really start to look at putting together a picture for you know, what's going to be needed for this crop. Where is that nutrient going to go? You know, is there enough stores in the, in the soil? Um, maybe there is, but there's not enough in the plant. So maybe there's a different reaction happening or something else affecting it. And so really trying to look at the whole picture of the soil you know, is our kind of our source, but then the plants that sink of what's this relationship and how can we best get that nutrient to the right part of the plant. In the trial, we're, we're testing our application rates. So the first thing we're, we're changing is how much total fertilizer, uh, specifically nitrogen in this case, is being applied. So we have a, a replicated trial and we have various rates from a, a standard, you know, we call it business as usual. And then we have varying rates from there of like an 80% application rate and a 60% and a, and a 40%. Uh, we're also then looking at different inputs as well. So manure as a amendment versus granular fertilizer versus fertigation. These are all being uh, looked at and experimented with in this trial. Next for BC Living Labs trial is continuation. We're only just starting, you know, we're in year two of our actual trials here. And it's just gonna be a continuation of looking and seeing what kind of results we get after year two to see where can we go from there. Long term, we really hope to have a true idea of what the nitrogen needs are for our hazelnut crops. There's a lot of research around the world. The closest region to us that grows hazelnuts is Oregon, and they have a decent nutrient management in information. But here in BC, uh, we don't have a lot. And so really trying to like understand more what does BC hazelnuts need in terms of nitrogen input is such an important question to get answered. Anytime we can reduce our inputs or we can change a practice that costs the farmer less, improves yield, but then also can have a positive effect on the environment, that's a win-win-win. So we really hope that through this trial that part of that will be answered of understanding what's the actual input needs for, for our hazelnut crops so that we can actually provide better recommendations to our growers rather than using either outdated uh, information or information from a different region. So the Living Labs kind of project and collaboration is, is really impactful for, for the growers and the hazelnut industry itself in that it just gets more people talking. We're actually having researchers and you know, scientists on the farm. They're the ones engaging with the producers. These are questions that the producers have brought to the table. And so what we're just seeing is that, that larger breadth of like knowledge and experience coming together and, and sharing and actually trying to find solutions to real problems. You know, it's applied research. It's, it's things that can actually be adopted. That's what's kind of made all this research so impactful. The reason I think a lot of us are involved with it is seeing adoption, seeing this, the answers that we get from the research uh, spread across to more communities, more growers, and seeing those practices implemented. Producers should be getting involved with the BC Living Labs because it's such a great opportunity to collaborate, to be kind of on the ground floor working on some of this research, to bring questions to the table, to bring advice, suggestions, but to also be a part of this bigger network, this collaborative group working on these awesome ideas that actually have potential significant impact.